Hey, on a quick video, and I wanted to play with this stuff for a while. Um, and what I wanted to show you guys is there is actually a way to emulate x86 code on the UEFI bootloader on your ARM workstation or server. Again, I don't say ARM SVC because apart from the Raspberry Pi 3, there hasn't been much traction on getting uh, upstream EDK2 working on SVCs. Some of the high keyboards have been but but that's about it. Um, uh, I, of course, use the um, Overdrive 3000 from AMD and a soft iron, uh, which is sort of end of life now, but you know, so software support still there, everything works, so there's no harm. Um, the other thing here is that this whole x86 emulation bit was um, the master plan and work of Alexander Graf here uh, while he was working at Seuss, he was also big at ARM, he did the whole ARM, like, he did the whole ARM uh, agent at Seuss and uh, Seuss user, I know I pronounce it a bit weird but that's besides the point. Um, so here on the EDK2 platform code we have the device description open. And here you can see they have um, defined x86 emu. Uh, it's default enabled um, uh, as false. So it doesn't really build until you manually type in true here or add that to your build uh, thing. But if we go and search for this, I'll see, uh, I'll show you what exactly is being used. Um, and so not here, that's in the FDF or flash definition file and here you can see it enables the uh, emulator x86 dxe.inf uh, which is nothing uh, more than just it just loads the EFI uh, now I'm not entirely sure of what licensing reasons is it not open source or maybe it's just difficult to build so they just have a uh, EFI stuff here um, but it looks like there is a repo for it um, and yeah so you have your e emulator uh, dxe.efi and all the .inf file does is just loads it into your uh, binary it doesn't build it uh, so if you want to build it it's here and uh, what it basically is, uh, and you, right now I think ARD is um, maintaining it, or actually it's just on his uh, GitHub account. But uh, what it does is basically emulate x86 binaries uh, in UEFI um, if you're running on an ARM platform. And why is that important? Is that when you're running an ARM server, an ARM desktop or workstation, uh, if you have any PCI cards here, like this one which is a USB 3 card very few USB 3 card work natively uh, because they don't have the EFI drivers for ARM so if there is the USB chip that's super generic and it doesn't need a specialized driver it will work just fine and um, here you can see I don't know if it's visible uh, because my uh, focusing thing is broken but focus but that chip right there, that's a flash chip, that's the main controller, that's a flash chip. And apart from all the settings for the flash controller, uh, sorry, for the USB 3 controller and the firmware for the controller itself, it also contains the EFI code um, and the EFI drivers to be loaded onto an x86 system and it's compiled for an x86 system because that's where people expect it to be used. And flash chips don't have a lot of space, so if you like have a massive flash chip on there that supports all architecture, um it will be quite large and now they have supported started to have a thing it's called esb or ebs drivers where that's more or less generic and will run on any platform but yeah that's required and more than that it's required to show graphics output during boot now amd does provide arm 64 uefi drivers but i've tested in and i've not have much luck with them uh however if i enable the x86 emulation it takes the x86 drivers from the um, from the 
GPU and then just emulates them and runs them as if it was running on an x86 system but at the end it's running on an ARM system. So it's a stripped down, very very stripped down version of QEMU running on your um, running on your ARM platform and on your on your bootloader uh, which is very neat. Uh, it's, it's not very large in terms of what the sizes are. Uh, and let's see if I can uh, do, I do it single handedly. Well, this is supposed to be a small video, so I'm not going to edit it. So, you guys will see everything that happens. Um, right, so here is the serial output, and here you can see it loads the x86 driver somewhere here, the x86 emulator somewhere there and i will uh, boot it once more so that you guys can see what's happening it's shut down right now um, and i have on display here so if the display turns on that that means the x86 driver is working i have nothing else loaded up and let's go and power it on it just takes a while um to like do memory training and stuff and again server motherboards are just slow to boot it's there's there's just things that they set up every time they boot and that's why they're slow so once it comes up i'll quickly move the camera over to the screen so now it has started i'll move the camera over to the screen and you should see it wake up soon enough and any time now there we go tiano core is loading and it loads into the boot menu and it starts to boot so I, I should have pressed escape but I ran out of time um, now the graphics driver has uh, not not yet taken over uh, because this is the um, this is the Fedora's flick, flicker free boot mode so it's still using the frame buffer from uh, the bootloader so it takes a while um, once it boots up I'll reboot it and I'll um, and I'll show it to you guys that it's actually working pretty well even uh, like the boot menu comes up fine so um, just waiting for it to finish uploading which might take a while um, let's see what's keeping it up um, yeah this part is I'll pause actually this might take a while Alright, so just going to reboot it now and um, we should see if I load again in a short while. So you can see it takes over the frame buffer again and we'll just wait for a second. Uh, should come up pretty quick. So our motherboards are kind of wonky. This I hope that some motherboards had a quick boot option, but they don't. Yep, it's working again. So I need to quickly just keep pressing escape, and hopefully that loads me into a UEFI um, boot menu, and. So you can see what's being displayed on the screen also comes up over serial so it's practically mirrored uh, and you can see like seattle uh, platform from amd uh, and 2 gigahertz at uh, 16 gigs of memory um, and yes it's a amd arm 64 core i've talked about it you know like a while back it's a arm 64 sock um, so whatever I do on the screen is again mirrored on the serial port so it's basically the same buffer um, and here you can select your boot device as you would on any other uh, x86 desktop system and you have your boot maintenance manager you can also add drivers if you want uh, and you can uh, increase the auto boot timeout to whatever so in case like um, I was slow last time 
uh, I can increase it to 20 and it will give me nice 20 seconds of uh, boot time and uh, it is just like boot next value if you want and uh, I can press F10 to save I mean it's it's pretty much the same thing as with all of the other um, UEFI biases but like the entire frame buffer uh, had like the entire graphics driver is being run on an x86 emulation mode kind of um, so I'm not entirely sure if the driver only initializes the device and then the rest of it is just uh, uh, is just generic UEFI calls that doesn't don't need to be emulated or all the time that the frame buffer is active during UEFI is that x86 calls are being emulated so that's some clarification I need on that but yes this is because of the x86 emulation within uh, UEFI so I can now just basically uh, reset that and it should give me a higher timeout so again yeah this is this is, I'm, I'm just showing off what you can do so um, next boot you can see like the booting of like the no please wait while loading kind of a boot progress um, uh, pretty promptly and so here now you should be able to see everything um, come up in a second so yeah so the Tianagor boot now it's much slower and you guys can see it properly this is what the boot skin looks like and I can go and escape it to uh, a boot menu as you board as I showed before I'm going to boot manager and boot into Fedora and then I have my grub and then Fedora starts up uh, from here and as soon as it goes into a larger display it takes over the EFI frame buffer and yep again we are back where we were so thank you so much for watching I'm just amazed that it just works flawlessly I didn't do much I just flipped the switch and <laughs> set it to true and it took care of everything else so I've been you know struggling with EDK2 for a past couple of weeks with some of the, my personal projects but this one worked and I'm pretty happy about it so thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one